Hey guys, how's it going? I'm heartbroken right now. I just recorded a game and there was a Windows update this morning and I didn't realize it, but I guess my microphone changed its device name or some nonsense and there was no audio for the entire recording. So we're switching to recap format, which you know, it's not a bad idea because it was a very long game anyway. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Let's jump into this game review. This was a really cool game against a pretty strong opponent. He's in the 1500s. His peak rating, you know, I checked his profile, was 1650. So, and he's been playing for a long time. He's got a bunch of games. This is a really strong player. And we get the bishop's opening. Now, I don't know much about the bishop's opening, but I know that it can transpose into the Italian, and I was hoping that it would, because I have a lot more experience with the Italian than whatever this can turn out to be. So, it does. I played the, um, well, I always call it the Berlin defense. I know it's not the Berlin defense for some reason, even though this is literally the Berlin defense when they play the Rui Lopez. Here it's called the Two Knights Defense or something. Anyway, we're in the Four Knights or something. <laughs> I don't know. And um, now we're in the Joko Pianissimo, which is something that I've studied at least a bit. And what I like to do here after defending this pawn, if I get the chance, is to go after this bishop with knight to a5. That's kind of the the line that I've looked at, unless he gives himself an escape square right now, that would be pretty much my next move. Unless this happens. This is the other thing that can happen. I haven't seen this for a while, but this is essentially forcing me to castle so that I can defend this pawn, which I do. And my opponent takes, and I mean, this is well known to not be a good trade to make for white or, you know, Anytime you're trading a knight and a bishop for a rook and a pawn, that's usually considered bad, from what I know. And as you can see, the evaluation agrees. So here I knew I was winning. I mean, I just knew it because I've, I've seen this before, but it's been a while. At the 1400 level, I honestly haven't seen this. This was more likely to happen in the 1000 and below level. So I guess the question that I had was, am I going to be able to convert whatever advantage I have against a much stronger player? Like this guy, his peak rating is more than 200 points higher than my peak rating. And his current rating is, you know, it was like 120 points higher than my current rating. So kind of intimidating. But let's see how it goes. Um, here, I played this move because I didn't know what else to do. And I wanted to give myself an escape square for the bishop. And, I mean, you know, I have some general ideas of what it does. It prevents him from, you know, playing this too quickly. Like, I, I understand that it does some stuff. But I can never really tell the difference between a6 and a5. So I, these days I usually play a5 because I see it a lot in game review. Now, I did consider this move. I thought, oh, look at that. I can attack the queen, and this pawn is pinned, so he can't block. But he can block with the knight. And I thought that a lot of times people want to bring their knight over here anyway. So I didn't want to just give him that. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. I see that a lot in the Rui Lopez. They'll bring this knight, like, over this way. They move that rook even. Like, they might jump, um, sorry, they might jump here, move the rook here, and then jump here, and then jump here. That's a, that's a common thing that I've seen. So, I don't know, maybe this guy was, was going to do that anyway, and I thought, yeah, if he jumps there, what's the point of this? Then he's going to kick me out. Like, you know, what, you know, what is this? So, I didn't do it. I pushed the pawn. Now he brings his bishop out, and I had to think for a while here. But I didn't want to lose, I didn't want to trade off this bishop because this pin can be so powerful. I figure, you know, I'll just block it up for now, but this pin might come back later in the game. That was kind of my hope. Now he comes after me, and like I said, I don't want to 
trade off this dark square bishop. He's very powerful for me in other games in this Joko Pianissimo. Like, I love getting a pin on that pawn. It's just the best thing. So I drop back. And notice the computer keeps saying I should play this move. Well, now I realized something. When he moved this knight, he no longer has that way of blocking. So... I play the move, and guess what? It's still the best move. Now, this is really rare. A lot of times, in my game reviews anyway, if you see best move, but you play it at the wrong time, like you play it the next move after it's called the best move, it's no longer the best move. So a lot of times, it's even like an inaccuracy. In this case, this was the best move like three times in a row. Did you see that? So this was a big risk. I, I was calculating here that, yeah, he's attacking, and what happens if he does this? Now I have two pieces hanging, right? So what I was thinking in my head was that I would take. And look at that. It is Okay, guys, this is the first time I'm looking at the game review, um, or at least in depth. I looked at it briefly right after, but I didn't try all these lines. Now that we're doing a game uh, a recap format, I'm spending more time on it because... This game was very long already. It went, you know, I, I did a lot of thinking. So that is the, actually the move. And I was thinking here, all right, if he takes with the pawn, I grab the bishop. So I recap, you know, like I get my piece back. I take, it's with check even. And I, I gain my material back and then I'm going to save this bishop. So I calculated that. And then I thought... Um, well, what else could he do here? He could just move his queen, right? He has to be a little careful where he moves it. He can't go here because there's a fork, right? Like, you have to be careful here. But my opponent did not fall for the trick. And now I thought, okay, what do I do? Like, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to trade off this bishop, but I have to move my knight. What can I do? for like maximum threat here. And the move I was considering was knight to here and knight to here, similar to that last knight sacrifice. But it doesn't work, right? Like you can't do the knight to here one anymore because this pawn is guarding the bishop. I realized that. And yeah, it would open up his king, but I, I don't know, I'm not confident enough. You know what I mean? Uh, another thing I was thinking would be really cool is bishop to here, and if he takes, right, then you get this fork and you're winning the game. But he obviously does not have to take. So right here, he would just take my knight. <laughs> and, yeah, it doesn't work. So I'm calculating all these things, and I could not calculate this, all right? Knight to here, what is going to happen? Right? I'm defended. He's in check. So I know he has to move. I know that the first move... Well, let's go ahead and play it. Or do you want to try to do it in your head? Let's try to do it in our heads, guys. Because that was what I was struggling with. I was literally thinking on this move for like five minutes. Okay? If we jump here, he obviously can't take with the queen. That just loses. So he has to move the king. So now imagine my knight's here. The king is here. Well... There's no longer a pin here. If I take his bishop with my bishop, I'm hitting the queen. What could happen? Okay, if he takes with the pawn, then his rook is opened up. This knight is pinned. And my knight is trapped. Okay, this is a little hard to see, but, you know, this is why I was thinking about it literally for five minutes. I kept going over it and over it. I was like, let's look at this one more time. Knight here, blah, blah, blah. Knight is pinned. What's going to happen? But if you think about it, remember, my knight is on this square. There's a pawn here instead of the bishop. That means I can't jump back here. I can't, you know, take th th this pawn is guarded. My the, the spot that I came from is guarded. I obviously can't jump here or here or or here, right? 
These spots are all guarded. This pawn is gone, but this pawn is still there, right? So my knight is trapped. Like, I can't jump away. And currently, my knight is protected, so that's not a big deal. I'm not going to lose it right away. But then I thought, he's just going to bring a rook over or push this pawn and cut off defense of... Wait, no, no, sorry, not this pawn. That pawn is sitting over here, right? Um, he's going to push some pawn and make my bishop move. And then I've got my knight hanging and my bishop hanging. So I got really scared and I could not figure it out. But then I had a breakthrough moment, okay? And what I figured out was I jump here, he moves his king, and I just jump back. Because I don't have to take that bishop. So anyway, let's see what actually happened. I jump there, he moves, of course. He actually thought about this for like almost two minutes. I'm not sure why, because it's literally, unless you're going to lose your queen. Well, I, maybe he thought there was some checkmate here, I don't know. And so he maybe thought he had to give up his queen. I don't know, I don't want to assume. But here I was getting pretty worried, because now if he pushes the pawn, right, what's going to happen? My knight is hanging, my bishop is hanging. So I bailed out. I said, hold on, I don't need to take. All right, uh, let's look at this other line. If I take, and he takes with the queen, I forgot to even mention that. That was the other thing I was considering, like take with the pawn or take with the queen. If he takes with the queen, now he can push this pawn. And the, the bishop is cut off from defending the knight, and then I'm going to lose my knight, right? That's what I figured. And so here I bailed out. And I realized, yeah, he can take my bishop, but I just recapture. It's really the same thing. If I take his bishop, I'm still going to lose my dark square bishop either way. Therefore, it doesn't matter. Like, my dark square bishop is gone. At least I'm going to recapture it. So guys, here's the major puzzle for this video. Why does it actually work to take the bishop? And I still don't understand this. Like I've looked at, I, like I said, I looked at this briefly in the original video, but I didn't want to spend too long on it because the game was already so long. I mean, look, my time is down to 15 minutes and we're on move 14. So that gives you an idea of how long I was spending on the last few moves. Oh, just had to take a sip of coffee. So guys, let's think about this for a moment. Why does it work to take? And and um, try not to cheat. Don't look over at the engine lines. You know, you know. Maybe I should turn those off. Let's let's turn that stuff off. All right. Why does it work to take? Well, we can game it out ourselves. So if you go here, and he takes with the pawn then just like I said, my knight is trapped. Like I was, I calculated that correctly. There's nowhere I can jump, right? These squares are all protected. Well, here's what I missed. And guys, give yourself, give yourself five points. No, give yourself 10 points if you actually found this move ahead of time. The move here is to not worry about this it's to notice that this knight is trapped. Boom. So he can't take this knight, and he can't save this knight. So all white can do here, I think, is start going after my knight, like that or something. And I take, he takes, I take, he takes. And I've given back the exchange, in a sense, just like I got an advantage from trading my rook for his bishop and knight. I just gave him my bishop and knight for a rook. So I don't understand this. I do not understand why that was better. But I guess it's just because you win the knight. I mean, I guess I do understand. Never mind. I don't know why it's minus 5.5 instead of more like minus three. Actually, a knight for a pawn. So I'm only up two points of material, but it's minus 5.5. So I don't totally get it, but I get it a little bit. But anyway, okay, back to the real game, guys. 
that was for me that's just beyond my current chess level like back in this position right so right here if you could see all of that and notice that the that the knight was trapped then like i said give yourself some massive points guys and i'm actually going to ask somebody in the chess boot club or sorry the chess boot camp club to look at this position and tell me whether this is something that a 1400 level player should be able to see or is this something that a stronger player could see or is this a computer line that's one of the things that i really struggle with whenever i'm trying to learn on my own from a game review i i don't have that wisdom you know like is this something that what was that how many how many moves were in that line we just looked at um like one two three four five like five or six moves we're gonna get an advantage to me that's very complicated and yeah i did realize that my knight was trapped and i would end up losing it i just didn't i didn't see this at all yeah i, I don't know anyway all right let's see here guys Oh yeah, you know, I'm also curious if he doesn't go after the knight yet, why not? Here, let's let's say um what were we doing? Oh yeah, we Oh yeah, we go after the knight right now. He can't Oh no, 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 sorry. We have to trade. See, look at that. We ha we actually have to trade bishops first. We cannot go after the trapped knight yet. So why is that? The knight is still trapped. Mm. Yeah, see, I just don't understand this. This is this is bizarre. What's going on here? All right, I'm turning the lines back on because I'm really confused right now. Oh, it's because this pawn must be because of the pawn. Because now it's like I said, now the bishop backs up and my knight is trapped. Okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, I get it. So right here, we do have to take first. And then white recaptures. And then we get the knight. Okay. Oh, wait, no, we don't. What? We, now we have to jump back here. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 because that was the queen takes. If the pawn takes, then we go after the knight right away. Uh, see, guys, this is so complicated. Should I have been able to see that all of these variations and moves? Or is that just beyond my ability and that's too much to expect? I don't know. I don't have the wisdom to judge that. So that's what I'm going to ask about. And um, anyway, back to the real game. Sorry for that long, that long tangent. All right, here we do this. I bail out because I did not see all that stuff. But he really surprised me. I'm going to turn feedback back on. He really surprised me. I didn't even consider this move. I was like, he's giving, he's letting me keep my bishop, trading a knight for a bishop, huh? That's cool. I mean, I like having the bishop pair, and even, yeah, the, the pawn is no longer pinned, but I, I like having a bishop that's staring down there and potentially controlling these important squares next to the king. Now, here, I fully expected him to grab this pawn, and I don't know why he shied away from it, but he did not do it. And that, I didn't realize it was this much of a blunder, but I found the best move, which is just pushing, because if he takes, I recapture with check, and his king is opened up, and it's just looking really bad, right? I'm going to bring my queen over there, and it's going to be checkmate. He does not, then I thought, okay, he either has to take or push the pawn. If he pushes the pawn, I bring my bishop in and hit the rook. The rook has to move. The king is completely restricted. Let's see what happens. My opponent pushes. I bring my bishop in, just like I said. Here he surprised me again, and he moved his rook this way. And I figured, okay, he's giving up the exchange, because I'm going to put my bishop here. Only legal move is for rook to take, and then I take. 
So I'm giving up the bishop and a pawn for the rook. Now, is that a decent move? Let's see. I, let's see. I didn't actually play it. Okay, that loses a lot of my advantage. It's minus three instead of minus eight. So that would have been really bad, even though I'm winning the exchange. I mean, I'm still winning. It's not, I, I, <laughs> maybe, see, maybe I'm biased, but I wouldn't call that a, a blunder. I'm still winning. I've got a, a full extra piece. Look at this. Or sorry, this one. That's my extra piece. So I still have a shot at winning the game. All right, but here I decided to increase the pressure and I brought my knight in and I was really happy with this move. I, I was thinking, all right, well, he still can't stop this. Like I can do that exchange anytime I want. And now I'm bringing in more pressure. I can bring my queen in. There's all kinds of stuff I could do. Here he gives me a check and I offer a queen trade. And look at that. I'm happy to see that this is the best move. As soon as he moves his queen, I said, look at this. We've got mate in one. We've got mate in one. He has to be super careful. We trade queens, and here he blunders. I find it, and that's the end of the game. So I'm really happy with how it ended. I did not realize that cashing in my advantage here and just being like, oh, I won your rook. I didn't realize it was that bad, like losing five or six points of advantage. That's pretty insane. That's pretty insane. But, you know, it is what it is. Still pretty happy with how it went. And, of course, getting that nice checkmate was icing on the cake. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'm really, I'm really, really, really disappointed with myself that I didn't check my microphone before I started recording because I did have a Windows update and this has bitten me before and I really wanted to show this new member of Chess Boot Camp my actual live thoughts in the position because, you know, this person has been very generous in a, another conversation we had and I was like, I was going to ask like, hey, can you check this out and tell me how to modify my thinking or what I should have been thinking instead to actually find this tactic. Uh, but this will have to do, I guess. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye.